So the first time I assigned homework, the next day I asked the students who had their homework. I'm waiting, like I had to close my eyes and everything, right? When I opened them, every single student had their hand raised high. What? <laughs> So over the past month and a half, I've been in China with my family teaching at an international school in Shenzhen, China. All right. So I want to tell you about my experience, but I want to tell you about it in a way that is going to compare it to my experience to teaching in the States. Now, before you watch any further, if you're somebody who gets very upset very quickly, I want to put this disclaimer out there. Everything that I say is really just my opinion and from my own experience. So you can get mad if you want to. I don't care. Fight me. What's up? So, teaching in China has been awesome. Everything has been pretty much awesome. I wanna start with the students because the students are really the most important thing. The students here in China are very dedicated. Um, they're, veg they're very educationally minded, right? They know education when they leave school. It's education, education. When they're in school, it's education, education. Um, the students are very respectful and they hold a high regard for their teachers, right? There's no slang used whenever I'm talking, whenever they're talking to a teacher, whenever I'm talking to a student or tell a student to do something, they do it immediately. Anything that I need in the class done, I can rely on the student to get it done. And whenever I assign work, whether it's classwork or homework, the students are very, very pushed to get it completed. Most of the students that I've had are on grade level or above grade level. There are a few who are not on grade level, um, but they are making progress to getting on grade level. There are behavior issues, right? I know a lot of people think that moving to China or moving abroad is going to automatically take away some of those behavior issues that you have. But no, I mean, to be honest with you, some of the behaviors are exactly the same, right? You see students who want to cut up every now and then. You see students who have home life issues, whether it's with their parents or with them being bullied by somebody in their household, whatever the case might be. It's really the same as in the States, contrary to belief, most people, what most people think. Um, However, let's flip this over to the American point of view. When I was in the States, I taught for four years, and the biggest issue with students is behavior. Um, students don't want to be at school a lot of times, and they also don't want to be at home, so it's like a catch-22. Which one are you going to do? Um, students were very disrespectful um, to other teachers. I didn't necessarily have an issue with respect regarding the student, like that student-teacher uh, you know, relationship because I had really good class management in the States, but I've seen teachers who were like, after the third day of being there, I worked with the woman, like literally, for three days, this woman would do nothing but complain, complain, complain. And this is from the first day of school. On the third day, she said she was going to quit. The only reason she couldn't quit is because the way that the school system set up, you can't necessarily quit and get another job until the, um, the first, like the, um, the first real break. So she stayed, and then as soon as winter break came, she quit. And um, that's the story of a lot of teachers. They get into the position, they're told by the universities that you know they can follow this book of guidelines and rules, and if they did it well, they would be successful. However, in the States, if you're in a school that is based in an urban community, you get a lot of issues that come from outside of the school, and once they're inside of the school, it's hard to get them out. You have to deal with students who are not on grade level. So at one point, I was, in a, I was teaching 11th grade. I had a student who was reading on a fifth grade reading level. Like, why is that? How is that even possible if teachers are doing their job? So that's, I mean, that kind of, that's, that's it in a nutshell. You know, the students in the States were not really dedicated, not really pushed to be successful in education because education wasn't really held as a high regard. They didn't have a lot of respect for teachers. Right, unless you build a relationship with the students. In China, you don't have to build a relationship with most of these students. Of course you want to, but the students automatically come to school with a very high respect for their teachers. So, I mean, really, <laughs> what more can you ask for from the students? Aside from the students, let's talk about the overall culture of China versus United States, and I'm just gonna try to keep this in the, the, the bubble of education. Everyone in China cares about education because I, I'm not really sure what the deal is. If you can hear that tapping, somebody, they're, they're doing a lot of construction in my building, so I'm very sorry. 
But the culture of education in China is so much better than the culture of education in the United States. In the United States, basically entertainment runs everything, right? Um, it, everything is about entertainment. So all of the money goes to entertainment. You see people in the entertainment industry, you know, who are given more respect than teachers, you know, who are trying to push students to be better, right? I would see students in the classroom listening to, you know, music, listening to different things on their, with their headphones as opposed to listening to me. That is unheard of in China, right? The students come to school and they are prepared and ready to learn. Their parents, oh my goodness, the parents are so different. Um, parents are very, very educationally minded. But don't take that to mean that every parent is like a really good parent because there are still crappy parents. Like crappy parents are all over the freaking world. Um, you get some parents who just throw their kids in books and that's their way of keeping their kids occupied, which is, I mean, that's a very crappy thing to do. You know, I guess parents, sometimes they're like, give us more homework so that we can bombard this kid at home with a bunch of stuff so he don't have to bother us. Um, in the States, it's, it's totally different. You know, you get parents who are very lackluster and don't really care about the education system. They don't really trust teachers to do their jobs. They don't really put a lot of effort in communicating with teachers. And it, it's just, I mean, it's like, come on, man. Like, either you're going to push your kid to do better or you're going to have conversations with me so that we can figure this out together. But that's not necessarily the case in the States. You get more students who are failing, and you have more parents to call. You have less parents who answer the phone. Here in, this, here in China, um, I mean, really, the parents will call you. They call you to see what they can do to push their kid. They call you to see what work they can take home to do. The students here, not only do they go to school, but also after, after school, they go to this thing called like a training school, where it's pretty much tutoring. It's like after school program where students get more education and they learn more, they get specialized education. Um, I teach at an international school, school, so or actually I teach at a bilingual school. That and There are other schools a part of our sector that are international schools. But the students who go to my school are very wealthy. Um, the tuition at my school is $34,000 a year. And <laughs> the interesting thing is, and this is beside the point, this has nothing to do with, with education, but I was looking at the students' shoes because I, once I found out how much it cost to go to our school, I was like, man, I wonder what kind of gear the students are gonna come to school with. You know, In the States, students had on Jordans, they had on Nikes, Adidas, some even had on Balenciagas and Yeezys. Like, wow, and this is a low-income school. <laughs> go figure. But none of the students here had on name-brand shoes. But it's a, it's a culture issue, right? Like. We value looking rich and acting rich while this culture here is more concerned about education, right? The thing that's going to make you rich and wealthy in the future. Like that's, that was a big thing. Um, teacher life is, is a thing here. Like teachers can have a life. In the States, I did not have a life. I spent the majority of my time grading papers and calling parents and dealing with behavior issues in school and outside of school. But here in the States, right, behavior issues like is a very minor thing. I don't really have to call out of parents and complain about their kid. I don't have to waste time at like PD meetings on about behavior. I don't have to, you know, worry about anything like that. Like so far since I've been here since July, I've only had one uh, meeting, one, one team meeting. I haven't had any PDs yet and our school is doing just fine, right? Now, again, it, it's, it's different in different schools. So I'm only speaking from my school. Um, but our school has been awesome. The next thing I want to talk about that was very shocking to me is the pay difference. Um, when you teach abroad, when you move abroad, schools are going to offer uh, different accommodations, right? They offer free housing. They might offer relocation allowances or travel allowances, uh, bonuses every year. The school that I work at offers every single one of those. Not to mention that I make about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars more than I made last year teaching in Nashville, Tennessee. So basically, I make the salary that a doctorate degree holder would have made in Nashville. What are you talking about, Pooh? Go back in there. Okay, come on. Well, come here, baby. Come here. Hi. Say hi. 
So I'm really trying to, um, you know, save as much money as we can while we're here. You know, we, we save about from 2000 to about $3,000 every month. And, you know, we own a home back in the States. So we, we pay our own mortgage, but we also have renters in the house. So we're really trying to capitalize on this financial benefit. And um, not to mention that when we were in the States, our son had to go to daycare. But here, my son gets to go to school for free. And m let me remind you that the tuition at this school is $34,000 a year. That is for a fifth grader, right? My college tuition wasn't that expensive. Um, yeah, so take that into account. So our apartment that we were given, is, which is free, was is a three bedroom apartment in the middle of food, the Fuchin district in Shenzhen. Um, to me, oh, this construction is getting on my nerves. To me, this city reminds me of like a New York, um, especially when it comes to like pricing of apartments. Very, very expensive to live here. Um, but we don't have to pay any of that. So if you added that to my salary, like we would probably be making like $9,000 or something like that, like $8,000 a month. Um, so yeah. It's, I mean, it's a huge benefit, not to mention all of the uh, accommodations that we get, every single one. The relocation fee, the, uh, uh, the freaking um, travel allowance, <laughs> the paying for our flight tickets, we get uh, tax benefits, we also get bonuses each year, as well as a 3% raise in our pay every single year. We get 6% of our salary returned to us in the form of a check. Um, that we can put toward our 401k or whatever we want to. So, uh, that's really been my experience. I mean, teaching abroad has been awesome. Um, but, but at the same time, I'm not trying to steer you either way, right? If you're a teacher who's been teaching for a number of years and you're like, I'm on my last leg, I'm about to quit and change professions, I advise you to check out teaching abroad. The money is really good depending on if you, you know, have the right resume and all that stuff, you know how to market yourself. Um, and it's a new experience. It, it's a crazy experience. I would have never imagined doing anything like this, especially coming from where I come from. It just, I've never met anybody doing this kind of stuff. I'm the first one, um, which is pretty cool. If you're a teacher who's, or let's say that you're, you know, a, a person who's in college about to become a teacher, you know, definitely think about teaching abroad um, because it's awesome. Um, I wouldn't teach abroad before I taught in the States. I wouldn't do that because you would definitely be let down. You will be let down because the systems are very, very different in the United States and overall culture is so different. It's crazy. There's a lot of stuff I could have put in this video, but I'm running out of time. I didn't want to go over 10 minutes, but I'm afraid I probably did. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of benefits to teaching abroad. Money is not the only thing, but money is huge. It's a, it's a big thing on average. I can probably make about 70, 70 something thousand dollars here, um, as opposed to making my little, you know, $49,000 in the States. Before I moved here, I researched the school that I wanted to be at. I knew I had to be at an international school in China to make the kind of money that I make. And I knew to get the account, to get the accommodations that I wanted, I was going to have to really get in some sort of prestigious school. And that's exactly what I did. I was reading an article before I came here from a woman who was like, this is how I made, you know, 100K in China. And I basically followed every single thing that she said. And we're getting there. But, um, you know, it's, it's about more than money. The culture is pretty cool here. It's not a culture that I would want to raise my family in for different reasons that I'll say in another video. But um, I'm loving this experience so far. Very, I mean, it's, it's awesome, it's different. Um, it's good to be away, but I miss the United States, right? Me personally, if I had a choice to go back and make this kind of this kind of money and have this kind of life, I would definitely rather be in the United States because there's just no place like it. The United States is awesome. I know there's a lot of political bull crap going on and racial injustice and all that old crap, but the United States is it's an awesome place. I mean, that's it. <laughs> But anyway, man, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We're going to keep on putting out these videos. I know you miss my wife. You saw my little baby. You probably miss my son, too. Um, we're going to keep on making these videos to show you guys our experience being abroad. We love you. We miss you. We appreciate you guys for supporting our channel and what we do. 
uh, please leave a comment. Anything that you would like to see, anything you want to see us do. I'm trying to get a challenge going on where we can challenge, you know, pick out some food and challenge each other to uh, get out of our comfort zones a little bit. If you know anything that we could do that you're familiar with, if you're from China, you know some awesome things that we can get into, especially playing basketball. I love basketball. Got to play a little bit. Anyway, please hit us up, leave us a comment, uh, check out our Instagrams, become our friends. Um, and yeah, we're gonna keep this thing rolling as long as we can. Miles away. Later.